Hi everybody, I'm Kimberly Edwards with cookingwithkimberly.com and tonight for dinner I am making a roast beef. This is actually a top sirloin roast and I'm going to show you guys what to do with a with a big piece of meat like this. I know it's scary for most people to look at in the store and they go, I don't know what to do with that at home. Don't be scared. It's just a piece of meat. It's all good. This is what you do, okay? So when you when you have beef, you don't really want to season it with salt to begin with because the salt can draw out any juices and you don't want dry beef, right? Why would you want to eat jerky when you want to eat some juicy roast beef? So all I'm doing is I'm seasoning it with pepper. No salt, just pepper all over the place. Okay, season it well. There you go. Make sure you get that fat as well. Fat is what's beautiful on beef. Okay, so that's all peppered up, okay? My hand is dirty, don't worry, buttercup, you can wash your hands after, okay? I have a little bit of bench flour here already measured out for me, and I'm just going to sprinkle it over the outside of it. I just want it lightly coated so that I can pan fry this. Now, right now, I have a large frying pan on my stove, and it's been preheated. It's on low right now, but it's been preheating for a while, so it's pretty darn hot, and if I put anything in there, it's going to sizzle. I have um, olive oil in there, probably... Mm, two tablespoons worth and I'm gonna brown this up on all sides before I put it in the oven okay now this piece of beef is beautiful it's already um, tied up it has string to hold it all together okay now don't be afraid of the string you don't have to cut it off either in fact you can um, brown this in the frying pan with the string on no big deal you can also roast the whole darn thing with the skin with the string on now when you take it out of the oven, that's when you take it off because you don't want to eat string, right? Okay, let's make sure everything's coated here nicely, okay? Just a light dusting. Got me? Okay. Here we go. Now, I'm going to wash my hands and then I'm going to bring you over to my stove, okay? Sit tight. Now, you, you can also um, season this roasted beef by puncturing holes into it with a small cutting knife, small sharp knife. And basically what you're going to do is just go and you can stick half a clove or a whole clove of garlic all throughout the whole thing. A couple people don't like garlic that I'm cooking for, so that's all good. Who cares? And uh, we don't need it. Just pepper and salt. Beef tastes beautiful. So, and now I just touched my beef again because I just couldn't help it. I'm going to bring you over with me now. Here we go. All right, you are at my stove. There is my frying pan ready. Here I come. So, it's very hot. My oil is dancing, so they say. It, uh, if you ever swirl a cup of, um, a glass of wine, you'll see that it has legs. It's this exact same kind of principle. When you move around your oil, you'll see little streaks in it. You can tell it's super hot when it does that. I'm gonna need to move you up. And turn that light down because it's blinding you. Hold on. Don't blind my people. Okay, that's a little better. Okay. In goes my beef roast. Sizzle, sizzle. Now, don't let the pan lose too much heat. So turn it up now at this point if you've let it sit for a long time. This goes in the sink. Hand washing again. Okay. Now, I don't think I can really show you this whole thing because it's going to take a little while. It might take you a good 10 minutes to brown this on all sides easily. Okay, you want a really nice brown, golden, crispy crust before you put it into roast, okay? Your two tools that are going to help you are a great big carving knife or a carving fork so you can stick it in and help flip it over. Also, when you're flipping your meat, flip it away from you, not towards you, especially when you're using oils and stuff. When you flip away, if it splashes the hot, hot oil, it's going to splash away from you. If you flip it this way, guess what happens? It gets on your shirt, stains your stuff forever and ever. You have to throw it out or you burn yourself really bad. Please don't do that. If you flip, flip it away from you, okay? So I'm going to let this go and we're going to talk about the rest of what I'm doing. Okay. All right. Here we go. So I'm going to sit down too that. I'm going to sit down. No, I'm not. It doesn't look nice. <laughs> Let me get you closer. So now what I have done, 
is I have a large roasting pan. No big deal, okay? Spray it with some stuff. Grease it up with some olive oil, whatever you wanna do. Make sure it's nonstick, okay? After I've browned my roast, I have my oven on 350 degrees. I have preheated it on non-convection. Once it's preheated, then I put it on convection, okay? It saves energy, apparently, so that's what I do, whatever. So I'm going to roast this in the oven for two hours, approximately. My roast is 1.888 kilograms, and that is going to take, it takes about one hour per kilogram, so it's almost two hours. This will actually cut back on some of the cooking time as well because it uh, is cooking on the outside and already heating my, my roast up. So you're gonna cook it for, I'm gonna cook mine, this is how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it for three, on 350 for an hour, and then I'm gonna turn it down to 325 just because it's on convection. Convection ovens seem to speed things up a bit, but I don't want to really speed up beef. You want to really do it nice and slow so it falls apart and everything gets marvelous and lovely and juicy and tender. I don't want to kill it with heat, okay? So that's what I'm doing. You put your little meat thermometer in, which I'll show you in a second, hold on. In pops your meat thermometer make sure you get it like to the center of the meat you don't want it like on the edge or on the end um, because you won't be able to tell what the real temperature is inside so what I'm looking for is beef mm, I don't want to do well oh, let's do medium uh, that's 160 degrees this is a meat thermometer stick it in there set it and forget it you open up the oven you check it out if it's not there close the oven back up simple once it's done you're gonna take it out let it rest for at least five minutes covered in some tin foil on your counter. Let that juice, let the meat rest. That keeps the juices all in. You don't want the juices all going If you cut it, it's just gonna bleed out all the juice. Not bleed, but you know what I mean. It's gonna all run out, all the juice. You don't want that. You want moist meat. You don't want dry sawdust, okay? So let it, let your meat rest, okay? Um, you might also see that on the thermometer while it's sitting there resting, it's raising in temperature. Sometimes that happens. Actually, most of the time that happens. It'll raise in temperature, maybe five degrees even, um, but then it goes back down. So don't be alarmed, all is well. And that's it, you're gonna serve it with potatoes and I don't know, green beans, I'm doing green beans tonight and probably potatoes. Sounds good to me, sounds like a good dinner, a beautiful feast. So that's how you roast a beef. Rizzy wasn't hard, right? You just peppered it and put flour on it, you're browning it in the pan, and then you throw it in the oven and let it go. Don't be scared of big meat, okay? Come to my website, check it out. I do all kinds of pieces of meat and I show you how to do it. So even if you just read the label and you could just type it in the top of my search bar on the site, cookingwithkimberly.com, um, if I probably have the piece of meat on there and you'll be able to know exactly what to do with it. Okay, guys? So check me out on Twitter. Follow me at Cooking with Kim E with a capital E. Go on Facebook, facebook.com slash cookingwithkimberly and like the page. I hope you like it. Interact with me. Let me know what's going on. Also, check out my show on YouTube, youtube.com slash cookingwithkimberly. Again, the site is cookingwithkimberly.com. And I hope you eat deliciously. Ciao. Bye.